Right, okay, welcome back to the Average Golfers channel and this week's Testing the Tips where I look at a video from Danny Maud who's quite possibly, well he's top of the tree in terms of YouTube tutorials, golf tips, he's someone who I go to if I'm struggling with my game and in this case it's looking at the best driver swing for senior golfers or if you are struggle with your movement, bad back, a bit of flexibility I suppose then Danny shows a few simple moves we can make to try and improve our swing, increase rotation, store a bit of that power and release the club head so that we're not losing yardage, even though we're not as young as we used to be and not as flexible as we used to be. I'm well impressed with this, you know. Yeah, super impressed because every shot that I've hit, the relevance of yardage just stayed so straight so square as normal and foot back and flared the release with that toe makes a big difference as well that's right down the middle again Danny you've played a blinder here son so let me first explain what testing the tips is all about. First of all, I am an average golfer, very much like yourselves. And if I have problems in terms of my golf game, then I resort to look into YouTube and people like Danny Maud for some quick fixes and helps. And for me, this came about because, not because I'm gonna put myself in that senior category, I'm not gonna do that. But what I will say is that my back has been a bit stiff of late. And when I get onto that first tee in particular, the first three or four holes, flexibility has been a bit of an issue so I looked at this video and some of the movements or the changes that uh, Danny Maud asks us to make are certainly aimed at providing a little bit more width a little bit more flexibility but how we can perhaps still store a little bit of power and then release the club head and still not be losing out on yardage and I'll get to that very soon but in terms of Danny Maud where the tip came from don't forget if you want a full explanation of his how to do this then please follow the link below because he'll give a much more detailed explanation than I will. And this is very much my interpretation of that tip. We're gonna break this down into, I think it's four stages. And the first stage is very much about that sort of flexibility element. So if you take a tour pro and you look at their swings and just how far they swing and turn that top half, that tour, so store that kind of no movements almost in that bottom half, store plenty of energy, it looks fantastic. But in reality, most average golfers, no matter what your age is, you're gonna struggle with that kind of flexibility and storing that kind of power in like they do. So we've got to make some kind of uh, allowances, if you like. We want to still be able to store that power, but we want to be able to do it in a way that's not putting all kinds of impact on our knees, on our uh, lower back. So the first stage that is looked at is this is your sort of square position at address as you'd normally be, shoulders square, legs square. The first thing Danny asks us to do is take our right foot in terms of uh, a right-handed golfer that I am, take our right foot back away from the ball. So you've almost got a, um, an angle, a line, whatever you right back from left to right foot that is pointing in a totally different direction than it would be in a straight line here. You pull that foot back and at the same time, he's asking us to flare that foot as well. So just your toes moved out further right. What he's saying that does then is all of a sudden, it gives us room to take this club back and make the turn. So what we tend to do, and again, makes sense to me is when you're very much square and we're trying to make that turn because of our lack of flexibility, it becomes all about hands. All of a sudden we're losing power. We're not making that turn that you see the pros do. So what you're suggesting, take that foot back, flare it out a bit, and it clears out room here and allows us to make that uniform, if you like, arms and hands and then hips. And you're able to make the turn and straight away, you notice that you're able to get into a position far different than you could do, or at least I can do, from my normal stance, which is very much square on, and all of a sudden I'm feeling pressure in my knees here, trying to, trying to give myself as much movement as I can in that turn, but I'm having to almost work against what my body naturally wants to do. Whereas by moving the foot back, opening it out, 
it takes all the pressure off my right knee, releases a bit of pain off that back or stress off that back and just allows me to turn in what feels like in step one, a much better position. Right, so the next stage in all of this is, don't forget, we've got our position where I've moved my foot back, I'm flared out, I've given myself a bit of room there. The next thing is a real odd one for anybody who's been playing golf for a long time and have listened to things that are perhaps, well, I don't know, and that's keeping your head still and over the ball at all times. And again, what he's saying here is that that's a, t a really difficult thing to do when you're trying to, if you've not got the flexibility, if you like, same thing. And when you're trying to sort of get that rotation in the top half, but you're keeping your head perfectly still and your neck is strained again and restricting the movement, I suppose. So the next step is to move your head slightly over to the right hand side. Again, right hand golfer, don't forget, opposite if you're left handed golfer. And as you turn away, keep your left eye over the ball. And what again he's saying is that it, by moving your head to that side, you're giving you more, yourself more room and clearance, if you like, to bring the club and get that rotation without any kind of restriction. So I'm just gonna try it as where we're at so far. So foot back, flared out a bit. Eye, which feels a little bit weird to me. Eye and tilt slightly head to that uh, right hand side. Well, I wish we had the camera going the other way because the results on that are really, really good. We've got a ball going straight down the middle there, which, uh, as I said, I'm a bit disappointed. I haven't got, why well, I've got Trapman switched on, so we might just see that one. But there's a couple more steps that are interesting and I just felt there's a slight issue there with hitting through the ball, but there is something that we've got to concentrate on to make sure that doesn't become a negative. Right, so I referred to one potential negative and that explained was that if we move the uh, foot, right foot back, then it clears a path, it clears a route for us to make that kind of turn and that swing. If we did it the opposite way and move the left foot forward, it would clear a path for our follow through. So what we've done, we take the right foot back, that's all good, we've got nice clearance here and we can make a good turn, but what it did and what I felt again with that swing that we just did on camera is the follow through becomes a little bit different because we've effectively kind of shut this route off. It makes it really difficult to then turn and get round, rotate round that left hip. And I felt that on that swing, to be honest with you. So again, there is um, a drill, if you like, or a feeling that we need to, as Danny explains, that you need to have when you make that movement and that follow through. And that is to keep that V in the arms and almost with the toe of the club, feel like the toe is pointing to the floor. So for me, that's almost like some kind of like rotation as almost as oh, I want to hit what is a draw shot. So it's through there and then this toe end is almost pointing at the floor. Because what we've done, we've stored all that power, it's fantastic, but we've got to release it and make sure we're not losing yardage. And that's the bit that I'm finding just a little bit difficult. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and just, uh, so the swing would be, and there's one element as well that I've just forgotten that I should reference. So through here, and then the release is down, and again, the bit that I forgot is that, that right foot then comes, or right heel rather, comes off the ground to give you that release. Right, let's try that. And all of a sudden, and we have got Trackman switched on, I should have that ball, it's finished slightly down the left hand side, but the shot shape changed and I didn't feel as though I'd lost a tremendous amount of power and able to get through even my finish and that felt more natural than what it did when I hadn't made that change in terms of that shot sh feeling, if you like. I'm going to see what Trackman says there, and I'm going to hit a few more shots, and I'll give you my feedback as to just how much difference I felt this drill made to this average golfer at least. Now, one of the things I always said with this testing was interesting is we'll use Trackman to back it up in terms of data and really put these tips to the test and do they make a difference? And the interesting bit for me is the first shot you see me hit on camera, I said, I hope I've got Trackman on because it seemed right down the middle. And as you can see, it was right down the middle, but the yardage was just 205 in terms of carry. And I said to you again, I felt that I struggled with that release until we got to the second part of the tip. And that was that idea of releasing off of that back foot, keeping that sort of triangle, turning that toe end in a little bit and feeling as though the shape of the shot was much more of a draw type swing. Second shot in, it made a difference. We got to 217 carry and then the third ball in, we took it up to 231 carry. And the more 
I think that you practice this, I think it would make a big difference. And honestly, I was really shocked. We've done a few of these tips and I think in many ways, a lot of golfers and I included are sometimes skeptical of how much difference they actually make. And uh, the question sometimes arises in my mind, well, you know, how, how will it help this a, golfer A compared to golfer B? And I think that's the big deal. Not every tip is gonna work for every golfer, but in this instance, I've got to say, if you take a look, if it's something you struggle with in terms of flexibility, you find yourself becoming at all arms and you're not storing power anymore, then just that first tip of moving that foot away and backwards, flaring that right toe is a big deal in terms of giving you some uh, uh, room, if you like, uh, to, to start turning. And then to be able to release it in the way that we just have. Wasn't <laughs> And again, we, I cannot believe how straight I've hit the ball, but it almost feels, like I said, a bit more of a draw type shot. That was bullet straight, to be honest with you. Nice and controlled, and I've got to say, well worth a try. So you can use my explanation, interpretation of this in terms of what I think you should be doing or, or how I've understood we should be trying it. Or, like I said, go and hit that link below follow Danny Maund, he puts lots of great content out there and have a look at perhaps his more detailed explanation that might be a bit better than mine. But either way, well worth a watch. Thanks for watching. I love your feedback on these. Have you tried this kind of thing? Is flexibility an issue? Is it something you're struggling with? And uh, if you go out and try it, then come back, leave a comment below and let me know if it worked or not. Right, as ever, thanks for watching. Uh, if you don't subscribe already, then please consider doing so because we've got plenty more of these tips on the way because it seems to be a really popular element of me as an average golfer testing these tips out from the pros and seeing if they actually work.